We've talked about how easy it is to configure no loco's permissions, but another reason our clients love no loco is because of how powerful its forms are. Oftentimes when you're using a no code front end system, the forms are mediocre. It gets the job done, but you oftentimes have to pair it with another third party form provider to be able to capture the information and have the kinds of conditional logic that you need. With no loco, we've got everything that we need right out of the box. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we're No Loco Implementation Partner. You can get started with No Loco by clicking the affiliate link in the description below. So I'm inside of the No Loco application, and we're going to get started with a form. And by a form, I really just mean that we're creating a new record from this. So for example, when I'm looking at a collection of our projects and I have a button to add a new project, when I click that, that takes me to this form. This is where we can enter an in information. Now I'm in the build mode right now, which means that we can configure how this form is going to work for us. So if we look on the left-hand side, we've got some options for setting up our form. So one thing is that we've got public forms. Now by default, we're not typically creating public forms. You certainly can, but forms are just a way of creating those records inside of the application for our logged in or authenticated users. But potentially you might have some sort of onboarding form that you want to make available for people who are not users. And if that's the case, you can enable those public forms so that people have a URL that they can access this from even if they're not logged in. Next, we have our header information over here. And this is where we see this create a project and we've got a subtitle area. I really like how this supports Markdown. If you're not familiar with Markdown, this is just rich text editing that we can do. So for example, we could put a hashtag, a pound sign, however you want to think about that, uh, to be able to put a, a title in here. So we could say, create a project, and we've got those nice formatting options. If we wanted to have some list items in here, we could use asterisks, and we could say item one, item two, and things like that. So we really have some nice formatting options for how we want this to display up at the top. Now, as we're editing this, you notice that we can actually inject different dynamic values. So maybe we greet someone by their name because we know who they are logged into the application. We can do other things like adding an image. So maybe we wanna spice this up a little bit and turn this into our project intake form by putting a nice image up there. Then we also can configure our save button text. So instead of save, saying save, we could say create project on the save itself. We could customize a page that we redirect to after we actually create the record. Now here you'll see that we have all of our different fields and we can enable or disable which ones we want to actually show here. So these are the different fields that we have that are part of the project record itself. So maybe I wanna turn off this work items collection and we no longer see that. We're not gonna have that be part of the form itself. We can also add different sections here. So maybe we add a couple of sections and we could relabel this. So instead of new section, we're going to have this be uh, information about the project dates. And then all of this is drag and droppable. So I could move that section and have our start date and our end date. And then that now displays in a separate section. So we can really organize our information. Now, as we set up our form, I wanna take our client account because Every single project needs to have a client account attached in our use case. So I'm gonna click here and we want to actually make this a required field that it has to be filled out before the form itself is actually submitted. And now let's take our project name here and let's say that we want to actually validate to make sure that everyone has the same sort of project name for it. So we're going to click this and validate our field inputs. Here's where we can create some different validation rules. We've got some different choices. Fields like email addresses, we can validate that. If you wanna do something really fancy, you could do some regular expressions here, but we also have some out of the box text rules that we can use. In this case, I'm going to say that the text should contain, and then this is nice because we can, again, plug in those dynamic values. So in this case, I want to say that the text for that project name should contain the client account Let's click into our values and let's say that it should contain the actual name itself. So now when we come into our form and we plug in, let's say South Lake Shore, and I start to type in a project name, now it's telling us that it needs to contain South Lake Shore before we actually submit it. So we can create our own validation logic. Now this next kind of filtering logic, I think is one of the coolest parts of the logic that NoLoco has built. This is what you can't do in a lot of other form builders. 
So for this primary contact, we're saying this is the contact at the organization that is going to be the lead on this project from that company that we're working with. Well, in most form builders, what happens is you suddenly see all of the contacts in the database and you rarely want that. Wouldn't you wanna say, hey, only show me the contacts that actually work for this company. We wanna be able to filter it based on that kind of attribute. So in this case, let's click on our primary contact and we can come down to this options filter here. And what we wanna do is create a new filter and this is where we're going to say that the account, so of the primary contact, the primary contacts account, and then we'll say that it is one of, and then here we can plug in our values to be able to say from the record, we want it to match that client account. And then we're actually gonna link based on that. So if I click in here, now when I click on project contact, this should validate, and we should be able to see that only Carol Rogers or Sarah West those are the only two people in our database that actually match that South Lake store, I should say. South Lake store, those two people work there. Therefore, those are options that we have. And we run into a lot of projects where we use this kind of logic. We want to say, filter this down based off of some condition on the form or some linked property. And many, many other form builders can't do this. We can also add conditional logic to be able to determine when we show a particular field. So maybe I don't want to show an end date if we haven't populated a start date. So we can click on our project end date and then down here we'll say only display when conditions are met. We'll select data and from here we can type in our start date in the form values, project start date. And then we'll say if this is not empty, then that's when we're going to go ahead and display this. So now if we choose a date, then we can see that that project end date appears. If we don't submit that date, it's not going to even ask us that question. Now, another thing we can do is have default and hidden values in our record. So let's take a look at the status field here for a second. If you scroll down, we can see that we've got an option for a default value. Now, in this case, I probably don't need it to be a dynamic value. I'll turn that off and we'll say by default, this is kickoff. So that means when this form loads, Kickoff is going to be pre-selected so that the user doesn't have to do anything. They can change that value if they want to, but if they don't need to, then they'll just submit it and it'll be kickoff by default. But alternatively, we could create hidden values. So if we don't need the user to select that this is kickoff because we're saying every single project that comes through this form is going to be kickoff, well, then we don't even need to show it to the user. We can just say, choose the hidden value here and we can set that as kickoff and so now the user doesn't even see it, but as the record gets created, it's going to choose that kickoff value. Now, another cool feature that ties really well to forms is no locos action buttons. And so I just wanna show you something different. When I'm on the project itself, let's say we want to have a button where a project manager could just escalate the project if some kind of issue comes up. Well, in this case, we created an escalate action button that displays up at the top here. We also have a related record of project updates, and this could be a variety of different project updates. But basically, we want to chain different actions together to say, hey, when we click this escalate button, maybe we want several things to happen. We want to update the status so that this changes to escalated. We want to create a new update here, a new project update. Maybe we want to even automatically trigger an email. We could run all of those things with a single action button here. So if I click on the button, I go into my action buttons and we edit this, you'll notice that we can have these different actions here. And in this case, when we're creating a new record that's creating that project update record, it makes it related to the one that we already have. And you can see that this is really basically a form, a small little form that we're embedding as part of this action. And so what we're doing is we're actually encompassing notes that we do, and then we've got a status and we're just doing a default status here so that this information all happens with a tiny little notes box that comes up. It's a teeny little form in a modal and all of that information gets processed for us in the background. And then on top of all of that, that's where we have a couple different actions. So we can create that project update record, but we can also update the status of the project record itself. And then we could do things like, and you'll notice how many different options we have here, we could run a workflow, for example, and in that workflow, we could fire off that email 
or do some other kind of logic with a webhook. So now if I come out of build mode here, I've got my button enabled to escalate this. I can click my button. This opens up this tiny little form here in this modal to capture my notes. I can plug in some notes of the project is going to go over budget. I press to confirm and this runs those actions in the background. So you can see here, this escalated the project, it ran the update, and it also created that new record, that project update record to log that information automatically. And the last thing I'll say about this is that while it's really easy to be able to escalate this project, we probably don't want the project manager to escalate the project if the project's already escalated, that wouldn't make sense. So one of the things we can do is we can add some conditional logic around the button visibility itself. So I can click on button visibility, and then from here we can add a new custom rule. This is outside of the permission system. We're not saying who can do this, we're just saying when is it appropriate to be able to fill this out. So here we can select data from our project's status. I'm gonna choose that status, and we're going to say if that value is not one of, and then we can choose our different values. Let's turn off dynamic here, and we'll say if it's not one of escalated, and maybe we'll say kickoff as well. So we've got that logic encapsulated here. Now, if we close out of our build mode, again, you can see our button disappears because we've already escalated the project. Therefore, we're not going to view that escalation button. Get started with no loco forms by clicking the link in the description below.